welcome now to video number six, where we're going to be looking at a few of the other myths that cause us to become or to stay sick. Now, a good chunk of these we've actually alluded to over the course of these videos thus far. And so this is going to be a little bit of a review on a few topics, but we're also then going to go into a few other important little areas, kind of a few little side discussions that are important as it relates to finding solutions that are going to work for you and that are going to help to be able to work through the frustrations that are oftentimes involved if and when you're looking for challenges or where you feel you're doing all of the right things, but why is this not quite working for me? So first up, what I want to talk about here are the three enemies of progress as are given by Dr. Robert Brooks. So first one being ignorance. Simply put, not knowing. It is, as it relates to health then, I didn't know that this was the, the case. And as a consequence of not knowing, you're not able to accomplish or to achieve the level of health that you would actually desire. Second one is prejudice. And this is being opposed to something for a reason that may or may not be founded. I personally believe this very much. There is place for all things in healthcare and in medical care. The issue is that we don't ever want to confuse doing one versus the other, because otherwise that's not going to work. And oftentimes prejudices, they come from our past experiences, things that we have never actually thought through properly, or they're going to come through just our misperceptions about things. And a consequence of prejudice, it may stop us from taking the right kind of action that's actually necessary in order for us to be well. The third one then is superstition. And this is simply put, believing something that isn't true, especially in the area of healthcare. There are any number of different divergent opinions. We said this all the way back in the very beginning, that it can get very, very tricky to know the difference between what is fact versus what is opinion. And we have to weigh up both what we can find from a research perspective, who we trust then in terms of our advisors, whether they would be family members, whether that would be our doctors, whether that would be somebody else who we trust. But then we also have to check in with that intuitive sense. What feels right to me? Because again, as frustrating as it could be for somebody who's very much into the data and the analysis and all that sort of stuff, that is a very significant part of the human experience and also healing itself. We cannot disregard it. So we have to then weigh up these continuous three factors in order to then find what is ultimately going to work for us on an individual basis. So what we need to then consider then are a few of the myths that may essentially keep us stuck and that oftentimes they fall into one of, or at least a combination then, of these different uh, categories right here. Well, myth number one, we have already hit on this one quite enough, I would say. If I feel fine, I am healthy. No. And if you have any question about that at this point, please do go back and rewatch the previous two videos. The next one, I thought the problem would go away on its own. We talked about this one in the previous video. And I gave you a little bit of a rule of thumb. Do you remember what that was? This was the three-day rule, or sometimes the three-times rule. Again, if you are ever suspecting even the potential of medical emergency, something that will kill or cripple you, act immediately. Please don't delay. This instead, we're talking about those low-grade things, the irritable kinds of things, the things that are just sort of getting on your nerves, the little bits of pain or the little issues that are popping here, or ways that your body's just not quite functioning the way it used to be, whether or not there was pain, is if you're noticing your body is not able to mount an effective healing response within three days, it's a sign something is not working as well as it should be. Or if you're noticing a recurrent pattern of these little episodes popping up, even if it's not there all of the time, if there's this recurring cycle, something is not right. This one here, sorry guys, 
is especially common in men. Why? Because we don't want to be a burden. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. I'll be, I'll be all right. We get very, very good at ignoring those little signs. I thought it would go away on its own. Well, yes, your body should be capable of making it go away on its own. But if it's dragging on longer than you would expect it to, again, three days, then something is not quite right. This requires then that we are honest with ourselves. Again, we don't need to react or to respond to every little hiccup we might experience. We're talking about, man, this is not getting better. That's the sign that you're looking for. Next one then, the doctor will fix me. We talked about this one all the way back in the very beginning. The doctor doesn't fix you. The doctor does what is necessary so that your innate intelligence, so that you fix you. Think about this. Who understands this the very best? The emergency room surgeons. They say, okay, we've got a problem. We've got to do this. We've got to do this. We've got to do this. And then they say something along these lines. We have done everything we can. It's now up to the patient and if they're going to be able to heal from this. You see, they get it. They understand it. They are not, okay, we're going to give you this. This is going to fix everything, the magic bullet. Or you're going to have this treatment, and then you'll do this. And it's going to allow you to keep doing all of the things that you want to do in life. Remember we talked about what happens if you think, okay, well, you can keep doing all of the same bad stuff, garbage in, but you can just take a magic little pill here and you'll get gold on the other side. That is a fairy tale. Yes, we oftentimes do need the support and the assistance from medical and healthcare providers so that we can remove sources of interference to our normal function and life expression. But it is still ultimately our individual responsibility then to make sure that we are doing all of the right things or to the very best that we are able to in order to make sure that our body is capable of doing what it is supposed to, that is heal, recover at the highest possible level. That is our responsibility. We cannot shirk that to anybody else. Doesn't work that way. Now, there's also a few points of confusion that in terms of, well, what do I or what I need to do? Oftentimes, as we'd mentioned a little bit before, when people are noticing something isn't right, so they've gotten to the point of they are feeling a loss of function, they're feeling their problem, and they then go and they see the right person and they have blood tests or they have specialized scans or something like that, and you're told, quote unquote, everything is normal. And that can get very, very frustrating because, no, how can that be? I don't feel normal. Remember what we said, nothing happens in your body without a cause. For every effect, there is a cause. For every cause, there are effects. Things don't happen for no reason. But it has to do with perspective. Remember, a good chunk of the time, overt pathology is not diagnosed until you have lost 70% of your function. Symptoms start when you are at 50%. So you remember we talked about the zone like this. These are the limits of pathology, but healthy is here. So on either side, you have this gray zone where you're not yet into medical pathology, but you are not healthy by any stretch of the imagination. When you are in that gray zone, oftentimes your tests will say that you are normal. And it's because you don't have overt pathology. What you're experiencing is what's called functional pathology. Something is not working the way that it should be. In much the same way, I use this as an analogy. Think of your computer, right? Overt pathology would be like there is a big crack through the screen and it's on fire. You can clearly see that there's a problem. Functional pathology is like malware or a virus on your computer which means that the system is not working the same way that it should be. Now, you look on the outside and say, this looks just fine. Everything looks normal, but it's affecting how it works on the inside. Now, this is important because oftentimes a lot of mystery diagnoses in the body can be attributed to or are attributed to a virus, but that does not necessarily make it so. 
You see, a virus is oftentimes a very easy scapegoat, something you can blame in the absence of being able to explain it or anything else. Oh, we can't see what's going on, so it must be a virus. That is not always true. There are other telltale markers that you need to look through. And this is where it's very important, even for people who are specialists within their field. They specialize in a certain thing, but they realize and are open and aware of all of the other possibilities that could be potentially impacting a person's health. Remember what we've said. Health is not one thing. It's not just your diet. It's not just your exercise. It's not just your cardiologist, your neurologist, your gastroenterologist. It's not just any one of those. It is multifactorial. It can be influenced from a number of different angles. And yes, we can have our specialties, but we also have to know and be aware of the other possibilities so that we can actually help you accomplish what you actually want and not try to focus all of our time and effort in the one thing. So again, that's a little bit of the side there, but important to know and to understand that just because things may quote unquote look normal it has to do with perspective. And if something does not feel right, trust that sense, act on it, get a different opinion. You might have to look somewhere else. Now, it can also get very challenging then if somebody was to say to you, well, you don't need that. So oftentimes when we may start to experience different problems in our body, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to consult the people who are closest to us, and they're going to offer you know, their opinion. Remember what we said about ignorance, prejudice, and superstition? They may have their opinion based on their own circumstances, their own beliefs, but that doesn't necessarily make it true for you. And this can then be very challenging because if you've got an intuitive sense that says you need to do something different that's in opposition to that, you feel like you are in odds. So this would be an example where you go to see a healthcare provider and you ask, what do you think about this? And they say, oh, no, 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 no. I don't think that that's going to be right for you. I don't think that that's good. Or you see somebody else and they, you ask them, you know, should I do this? And you say, yes, I absolutely do. And you're like, well, I'm not really sure about that. You've got to check in, as we said, with your own intuitive sense. You have to do your own analysis. You cannot substitute. Remember, we said this one a long one back as well. Never allow either your accountant, your insurance company, or your government to make your health decisions for you. You are you alone have that choice. That is your responsibility. When you try to pass or hand off that responsibility to somebody else, if you don't get the outcome that you desire, that is not a reflection of them. That is a reflection of you. Push comes to shove. At the end of the day, you are responsible to you. And so if and when something is not quite resonating with you, that should be a sign. Double check this. Now, you might have to double check against your own ignorance as prejudices and superstitions, because that what might be the problem is. You believe something to be true that isn't actually true. And as a consequence, it's stopping you from taking the kind of action that you actually need. So again, this requires that you be honest with yourself. Is if something makes sense, but oh, I'm not sure. Why is that? Where is that coming from? Who is doing that talking? Is it coming from the survival part of your brain that's just trying to keep you where you are? Is it coming from your emotional centers, which may be governed by things that and opinions from other people in your life who you love or respect? Or are you actually making the conscious decision about this because you've weighed it up? It's possible. Even if you go through the checklist like that, you could still reach the wrong decision. But you've at least gone through the process. It's oftentimes, and this is one of the things in life where I may not agree with what you're saying, but I respect your right to be able to say it because you have thought it through. You have experts in all fields who disagree with each other. This is normal, but you can see what the individual thought process are. They just reach a different kind of conclusion. Same thing goes in your body to thine own self be true. You do need to make sure that you're following the evidence, you're doing the right thing, but you've got to go with what feels right to you. Now, in the same breath, you have to be cautious not to do too much. 
You see, we have this tendency as human beings. We think if a little bit of something's good, well, a lot of it must be better. If a little bit of drinking water is good, well, if we waterlog ourselves, that'll be better. Or if a little exercise is good, then what we need to do is we need to go out and kill ourselves by, you know, running 50 hours a week. This may not be the, the healthiest way to keep our body going, is what we're saying. And this is also very important, then, in terms of what our healthcare providers are doing. You see, it's very easy for all of us. Why? Because we're human beings. We do what we do, and we want to help people. How do we want to help people? Because we want to be able to do our thing to help them out. Because we know that if we do our thing, it's going to help you. But we always have to remember that we, the doctors, the healthcare providers, are not the ones who do the healing. We then have to be able to have an honest look at what you have going on to know what do you need at this moment. Is there something where you need some symptom relief? Is there something you need a procedure to save your life? Is there something you need where you need a treatment that's going to resolve the source of interference to your normal healing? Or do you just need time? All of the things are in place. Your body now just needs the time to be able to undo the damage that's been done to make the healing repairs and to elevate your health and your life function and expression. Which is it? Because if we rush in and start doing the treatment, why? Because we want to do the treatment because we want to help you out. But that's not what you ultimately need. Or if we are so focused, again, on our one lane, because that's what our specialty is, without being open to the other possibilities, that can actually prevent you from getting the right kind of care or not care that you actually need. In other words, the solution that we are offering is not what you actually need to solve the problem that you have going on. And this is also then where it's very, very important. You never, ever, ever confuse cause and effect. You see, when a person is experiencing symptoms in their body, symptoms by themselves are not the cause. They are the effect. So for example, we have this fancy language. It's usually either Greek or it's Latin. And it's going to refer to a diagnosis, such as a cephalgia or such as a lumbago. In other words, head pain or headache or low back pain or cardiovascular disease. So all of these, this is important, these are effects. They are not causes in and of themselves. You have a headache. Why? You have low back issue. Why? You have a problem with your heart. Why? A diagnosis is the end result of the effect. So there are times when the symptom is severe enough, you need to do something to treat symptom. Most people who I know personally, they say, I don't want to take medication. There's a time and a place for medication. I will say that straight up. I'm not prescribing anything here, but there's absolutely a time and a place for medication. And the best doctors know, though, it's going to be as low dose as possible, as little as possible for the shortest time possible. The medication should give you the time to be able to figure out what is not the symptom. We need to treat the symptom if it's dangerous. But what is the underlying cause? And then either what do we need to do or what do you need to be able to do to be able to resolve that underlying cause so that the symptom goes away on its own? That requires more work. That requires more investigation. That requires typically more time, more effort, more energy. But it is also what is usually going to get you the best kind of outcome in the long run. We're not just working for short term here. We're looking at the big picture, trying to figure out not just how do we get you feeling good again, barely over the line, just kind of hanging in there. We're trying to figure out how to get you as close to 100% as possible. This again comes to what is your actual goal? Where do you want to be? Do you want to be healthy? Yes or no? And then what are you willing to do in order to accomplish it? And it's requiring, again, being honest, 
being honest with yourself about what you are actually capable of because of those various limits. Everybody has different life circumstances, time, money, energy. We can't discount any of those. It's being honest. What can we do with the resources we have and do the very best that we can? So the question then is, well, if you're trying to do all of the best that you can, what are some of the things to keep in mind that are going to ensure the best possible chance of success here for you? Because again, it's very easy where we can believe something that's not necessarily true. And what it's going to do is it's going to set us up for failure and for disappointment. So one of the most important things, as we just said, is knowing the difference between cause and effect. Are you wanting to be just treating the symptoms, treating the effects, the diagnosis, or are you trying to figure out what the true underlying cause of that diagnosis is so that you're not just working short term, but you're really looking long term? It's also important then that you are looking in the right area. So as we have said numerous times, where the problem shows up may not be where the problem is originating from. This is why, yes, you can find all of the information that you want on health, wellness, well-being, medical definitions, medical diagnoses, et cetera, et cetera, on the internet. You don't need me or somebody else telling you, you know, what you can find out for yourself. The question is, is do you have all of the thought process to be able to look through the infinite number of variables and things that could possibly be going on? Not just the thing that the individual doctor, the individual specialist who you're working with is competent in their field, but are they looking to the bigger and broader picture about what is possible? Again, looking at the different sources of stress, the three areas of health, and then also the eight areas in the wheel of life that all influence each other. Because if we focus all of our time, effort, energy, and money in one spot, but that's not where the problem's actually coming from, you're only gonna get so far, it's gonna get really, really frustrating. We have to respect time, as we've already talked about. For anything that you do, standard physiological change, takes six to 12 weeks. Anything that you do, you've gotta be willing to give it a fair go for six to 12 weeks, and not just yeah, yeah, I'm half in. No, you're all in for six to 12 weeks. If you go longer than that and you're not getting a breakthrough, there's most likely something interfering with that process. I'll talk about that in just a sec. But if you're not willing to give it a go for six to 12 weeks, you're setting yourself up for failure. Full stop. Now, important also to know, well, where are you going to be in six to 12 weeks? Does that mean you're going to be 100% fixed? Uh, necessarily not. Because if your body has been a runaway freight train for 20 to 30 years, you slam on the brakes, guess what? You're still skidding in the wrong direction for a while before you come to a complete stop, let alone start going back up the rest of the way. So some people, yeah, in that period of time, their life is completely transformed. Other people, though, have only just begun. They can tell something is different. They can't quite put their finger on it. Their intuitive sense is letting them know there is some kind of functional change, functional improvement. They're still probably having, yeah, a whole bunch of issues, but something is changing. And this is why it's important, again, that we do not play the NAGA game, not as good as comparing our own circumstance, our own situation, our own results to somebody else, because our genes, our anatomy, our life circumstances are different. We can't pretend that things are the same now. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Compare you to you, your progress. And this is why it's important then, on occasion, not to look remorsefully to the past per se, but to actually look back. That way you can see, you can measure what kind of progress you have actually made to determine what is going to be appropriate for you. But remember, for true healing, one month for every year that the problem has been there, most people, there is going to be some kind of functional change, improvement within three weeks, but you got to give it that real fair go. Now, also very important, especially if and when you've done a lot of research on the internet, if you're experiencing some kind of a health problem and you're trying to figure out what it is, it's understanding that all look roads lead to Rome, but that there can be a bit of a mismatch there. What do I mean by that? 
By that, I mean if we have a certain diagnosis, remember that we've just said that a diagnosis is an end effect. You can get that diagnosis through a number of different pathways or roads. So, for example, you can get a simple issue like headaches, something like headaches, because you have a nutritional imbalance. You have a hormonal imbalance. You have a neurological imbalance. You have a dietary imbalance. You have some form of cardiovascular genetic issue. My point being is you can put the same label, the same end diagnosis, but each of those circumstances, each of those conditions is different. And as a consequence, it means that the treatment protocol that somebody else did to try to help with their symptom, whatever that was, may not work for you. This is why these videos are not giving any personalized healthcare or medical advice. Why? Because I can't do that. I don't know what your individual circumstance is. So recognizing that simply because a certain strategy worked for somebody else does not necessarily mean it's going to work for you. And in addition to that is the concept of what I call a combination law. And this is particularly challenging and for people who have the very frustrating, long-standing kinds of conditions. You're taking good care of your health, you're doing the best that you can, but somebody else got a result and you haven't. Why is that? It's because different forms of treatment are often necessary. So what am I saying? I'm saying that it's not just, again, one thing that causes a certain disease or diagnosis. It's where it's A, plus B, but it can also be B plus C, or A plus C, or A plus D, or A plus B plus D plus E, but not C. So my point here is that you can have different combinations of elements that are contributing to what you actually have going on. And sometimes it's particularly frustrating because it can be like solving a combination law. That is where you need all of the elements and you need them in the correct sequence. Otherwise, the lock don't open. This is the person who you've gone and you've done all of the right stuff, but you're not feeling any different and you're looking for that last thing. And that last thing, when you've seen other people on the internet, they say, I went and saw Dr. So-and-so. And we did this form of care, and it just revolutionized my life when I had done all of the other stuff before. Well, guess what? It so happened for you, that was the last digit you needed in the combination. That's why it looked like magic. But if you hadn't already done all of the other stuff before, it may not have worked. Or for other people, they may be going to see that practitioner because they said, hey, you had that kind of result. That's what I need. But they don't see the initial outcome. Why? Because that just so happens to be the first number in their combination lock. And again, this requires then, especially when people have the longstanding challenging kind of health issues, the understanding that there's not going to be something that solves 100% of what they have going on, that there's going to be this piece that's 10%. This piece that's 20, this piece that's 30, and this piece that's 40. And that you may need to solve them in a certain sequence. And that is almost impossible to know what the sequence is. As healthcare providers, we're always trying to figure out what the priority of care is. What is going to be best bang for your buck, best return for your effort first? But again, we are human. We do the best that we can, but we don't know all of the answers either. So we use our experience, the research we have, to find and come up with solutions to work and help you out. We wish that it was so much easier. We wish that there was an easy button. We wish that we could snap the fingers and boom, it was going to be the case. It was going to solve it all. But oftentimes when it comes to these health kind of issues, this is the true reality about what is going on. There's not just the one thing. It's a combination of things. And just because the different forms of care and the different forms of treatment are out there, we need to do tests. We need to find out what is appropriate for you so that we can give you a personalized approach, a personalized solution so that you can reach the goals that you actually want. Otherwise, what we could be doing is trying to fit a square peg in a round hole 
that of course is a completely wrong size. There are a lot of moving pieces to this, but I hope that in this particular video, again, especially if you are somebody who is looking for a solution for a particular kind of problem, it can be so terribly frustrating that you're getting remarkably healthy in the course of your exploration and doing all of the right things, but you still have this certain issue and you feel something is missing and you're not sure why this form of care, quote unquote, didn't work for you, or you're not sure about a certain kind of avenue. It's showing you that all of the bits and pieces actually need to work together. There is not, there is very seldom ever just the one thing. And usually if it ever appears to be just the one thing, it's only because all of the other pieces were already in place before that. We all then need to work together so that we can accomplish the best possible outcome for all of our individual patients. And it's also important for you to understand then that very often you don't need just that one thing and they're probably not going to be able to give it to you like that. But instead, what you need is you need to take responsibility for everything that you can do on your own. But then it's also looking for the right kind of team, the right people who are going to be able to support you in your endeavors so that you can go forward to the outcome, to the goal that you ultimately desire. I hope that that's going to help clarify a few of those challenges and those few frustrations and give you the encouragement and the clarity to know what it's actually going to take for you to accomplish what you desire. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.